Hey y'all. Hola. Welcome to 30 Minutes Down South. She's Allison. And he's Carlos. And we are two top producing realtors. With two extremely different Southern upbringings. Join us each week as we explore the Lake Murray area with our special guest. And welcome. Alison, to another episode of 30 Minutes Down South. Yes, another one. <laughs> Let's do one different. Alison, uh, we have a very serious episode today. We are. Yeah, why? Well, we're going to be talking with the other candidate mm -hmm. for Lexington County Council, the incumbent. Is that what you would call her? Incumbent. Incumbent. Charlie Wessinger. I love when you ask me about... Uh, English pronunciations. No, I knew the pronunciation. No, I was just making You're sure it was the correct me. word. Say, you learn it from me. You wanted to know how to pronunciate mm -hmm. incumbent. Here you go, Alison. Yes. Incumbent. Okay. Well, the incumbent, Charlie Wessinger, who is a native of Chapin, is going to talk to us today about what she's done over the last three and a half years on county council and plans that she has for the next term if she's reelected. She actually made it to our office. Yes, she did. Hi, how about we start uh, playing that interview? Let's do it. Welcome, Charlie Wessinger. Wessinger, right? Yes. Wessinger. 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 I got it right. <laughs> you got you know? it right. I like yeah. I live in the West and I'm a singer, but not. <laughs> so all. you are, Charlie, you are the second, no, you, you are the first person that comes to our show twice. How does that feel being really? the first? Yeah, yeah. that's oh, right. God, so special. <laughs> <laughs> like my second appearance. So you're a repeat you customer. That's hey, right. Hey, we have a repeat we customer. We haven't run her off yet. So we're doing something right. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charlie, let's let's get straight to the subject. Okay. You're running again for council member, right? Yes. Last week we had JJ Rez. He spoke with us. I feel like he's a great candidate. Let's talk about you. Okay. Lexington okay. County Council, just to... Make that clear since we're all split around here. There you go. Yes, <laughs> yes. So Lexington County Council. So, you know, four years ago, I went through this with the primaries against Johnny Jeffcoat. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he had been a longtime politician, 20 plus years. I was very excited to be in Lexington <laughs> County. Um, so I won. Um, and I've been doing it now for the past well, three, three and a half years. Okay. Um, so my first term so far has been exciting. Um, I've learned a lot. I have learned there's a lot of people that have issues with capital waste, mm -hmm. trash collection services, mm -hmm. um, to just a, a host of issues. Um, so I've enjoyed it and I've learned a lot. And our council group that we have right now is making a lot of progress. So I have been asked by so many folks, hey, are you going to run again? Are you going to run again? And I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> so I'm running again. Um, and there was more that went into that decision than, hmm, okay. You know, so it's, it's we've been doing a lot of work um, and I want to continue that. And then the citizens are like, oh my God, good. I'm so glad. I'm glad you're running again. And I'm like, okay. So, and then I'm done. I just want one more turn. That's it? And then I'm one done. Just one more. I'm done. You sure? After, yes. Yes. <laughs> done. Well, you know, obviously the very first question that comes to my mind when I, when I, when I think about you running again, it's a, it's a twofold question. The first one is, what have you not completed? And the second one is like, is what did you complete? You on took one of my questions. That's all right. I'll you know, great man thinks so like. <laughs> oh, we'll split them up. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever um, you want to start with, the complete so or the incomplete. When when I got on council, um, I had already been working with Aaron Long Bergeson for a while, and we had some road reclassification projects. So I had helped her with some while she was on council, and then the first thing I did when I got on council was I reclassified about seventy six roads in the Chapin area mm -hmm. from whatever they were down to an RL1 or RL2, which meant one home per acre or two homes per acre, the majority of those roads are dirt roads. And so a lot of people are like, well, why did you waste time reclassifying dirt roads? Well, they were all RL4, which is four homes per acre. Mm -hmm. And um, when, when we start talking about the number of homes per acre, it's by calculation. It is not a minimum lot size. So if you say one home per acre, 
people think it's an acre lot, mm -hmm. right? Or two homes per acre, it's a half acre lot, but it's the way it's calculated. So if I have a 20 acre track of land and it's RL1, I can put 20 homes on it. Okay. Those homes can be closer together right. with an, an amount of open space, but it's not an acreage minimum size. So a lot of those roads, dirt roads, were four homes per acre. Um, any time a developer will come in on a dirt road, if they do a neighborhood subdivision, they're required to pave that road. Developers don't want to pave a road. But there's a lot of constituents that live on dirt roads that want those dirt roads paved. So if right? you are a developer and you're looking into a property that is adjacent to a dirt road, is there a requirement for them to complete the road? How long? I mean, like, what are the, the details on that? The, oh, gosh, there's a ton of details. Yeah. So, like, the neighborhood roads themselves would have to be built to county kind of standards. Yeah. But to get to that, you would have to expand that dirt road and pave that dirt road to county standards. All the way to the main road? All the way it to, matter if... it could be from the main road to just to that development, maybe uh -huh. not the entire dirt road. So a lot of developers don't want to do that. Is that something right? new, Charlie? Is that uh, something no. that, no? Mm -mm. No, but, but that's there's... been around for a long time. I got a feeling, and I don't have the, the extent of it. I, I want to say that I've seen a couple developers that, so you can't, in the, in the old days, mm -hmm. you could have a smaller development on a dirt road. Okay. As long as there was still, um, what's the one that comes, to, there's one off of. I think of that one Stux, off of Amex Fury. Which one? Wasn't it, it was just a few houses and it was not paved. For so a that while. would be smaller, a few houses, anything over 10 lots would be considered a Subdivision. development. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, so there's a 10 lot, a 10 lot or 10 house minimum. Um, but so when we started looking at, um, a lot of the people in the area are like, we don't want all these developments coming in, right? Because you, you've heard the same argument. Yep. Right? Yeah. Time and time yeah. and time We're growing again. too fast. Right. Growing too fast. We need to catch up, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a lot of things that go into that. So I started looking and I was just like, well, all these dirt roads are on the to be paved list sometime. 20, 30, 40 years from now, I don't know, 150 years from now, we don't have a lot of money to pave roads right now. We don't have a lot of money to fix the roads right now, much less pave new ones, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I started looking at this and I was just like, wait a minute, maybe if we change the density on these dirt roads, and then I started talking to the people that lived on those dirt roads and they're like, oh my God, yeah, this would be great. So that's where 70-ish, 70, 76 dirt roads Mainly, there were some secondary roads or mm, smaller, smaller became, paved became roads, paved. right? That um, we changed the density on. So that was the first thing I did. But when, when you I say you change the density, it means that you reduce the amount of land per house. Um, reduce the number of homes per acre. Okay. So they all were four homes per acre, mm -hmm. and then we went down to one or two. Okay. It just okay. depends on okay. the situation of the which road. would make the land less valuable to a developer. Essentially, and in what it would do on the flip side is make it where if you wanted to buy a five acre lot or a one acre lot, you yourself, mm -hmm. it's more accessible to you, right? The individual versus the developer. Yep, yep. So then when you start you start looking at affordable homes, and there's a lot of controversy and a lot of talk about affordable homes. Right, mm -hmm. the Ch Chapin doesn't have any affordable homes. Yeah, the car area. Just, <laughs> we hear it all not, the time. <laughs> it's not affordable anymore to live here, and um, there's a lot of factors that go into well, that. Well, there is a there is a big difference between affordable and subsidized, correct? Correct. So right, and so and we don't want to subsidized is totally different. Mm -hmm. That is government subsidized housing. Correct. Yeah. Whereas and, a lot of people use the term affordable homes to mean I need to be able to afford right. to buy my home. And they're not even thinking of government subsidized. They're just Which, thinking of, I can't have a mortgage for $380,000. I can do a mortgage for $150,000. Right. But, but you know, that's a market. That's something that is. people cannot control. I think it's the, very subjective too. You know, what might be affordable for one person isn't uh, correct. for another. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. Um, and it is what the market will bear right now. Yeah. Right. The only the only way you can you can you can hit that mark will be subsidized, right. that's, and that's that's what they do in, in you know with Section Eight for renters or uh, rent control or you know you have to meet certain criteria to qualify for a special type of loan for certain uh, houses. 
that they also give tax credits to developers. Right. Correct? Yes. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and that's that's where we hear the, the controversy of affordable homes. So we know what goes into affordable homes. It's it's exactly what you just said, right? So then the developers get angry with us. Oh, you're making all these changes. You're taking away affordable homes. And I'm like, you are the ones that are setting the prices on these homes. And making because, an astronomical amount right, of money on you them. Know, and, I, and granted, every cost that they incur, they do pass on to the buyer, whether it's a tap fee, whether it's lumber cost, whether yeah. it's whatever, they're passing that on to the buyer. So they're still looking at their profit bottom line. So I'm just looking at uh, one of the most affordable markets in the United States here locally in South Carolina. Granted, Chapin, right. it's not the, the most affordable. Of but all it's the not counties. Charleston either. <laughs> well, no, and we've got a lake right here and that yeah. has driven up the prices yeah. too. That's so right. there's, there's so many factors that go mm -hmm. into that. So back to the mm -hmm. roads. So we reclassified a bunch of dirt roads. Um, the next thing we did was, um, had never been done before, which was the moratorium. So we did the moratorium, um, and I led that charge. When, what was the date when the moratorium started? Do you remember? June 2021. 2021. Because it was a six-month moratorium, and mm -hmm. it ended December 14th, 2021. Um, so it In was, your opinion, did it work? Did it get to where you wanted to be? I don't know. Okay. And, and, and I'm saying that because during the moratorium, we did the Lake Marie overlay. We approved the 20-18 ordinance, which had, Aaron started that, um, which had bigger setbacks um, from the roads, the mm -hmm. road right-of-way, and on the side of the homes. And some of that is because um, a lot of the neighborhoods that had a 10-foot setback mm -hmm. in the front of the mm -hmm. house. You've got um, houses that are pretty close to the road with a sidewalk yep. sometimes. And you have cars that are parking on the sidewalk or in the road. And our fire trucks are 11 and a half feet wide. And our chief orders extra mirrors all the time because those mirrors get knocked off because they're hitting things or vehicles because they can't get through, get through. some neighborhoods because everybody's parking on the streets. So there's an issue there. So that was one of the reasons why we increased the setback was to get cars off the street so people had enough room to actually park in front of their house yeah. since nobody uses their garages to park in <laughs> anymore, right? Um, and That's then, a theory. <laughs> a theory, right? And, so, and then the side offset we increased from 5 feet to 10 feet. And again, this that ordinance started in 2020, but we got it passed in 2021. Um, and that was to help um, homes that were only literally have 10 feet in, mm -hmm. in yeah. between them. Fires spread very easily. Yeah. So, you know, you start looking at public safety issues and you have to you have to kind of get back to the core of w what's creating these safety issues. So that's that was where 2018 came. So anyways, and we, that also deters the growth in, in, in certain way, you know, because now instead of being able to put the hundred houses in a development, now you uh, limited to 90 because of all the setbacks right, right. um so so there's that's good there there's, is there's, there's that. a little there's a yeah. little bit there and yeah. it gives people a little bit more room there's mm -hmm. there's some, a lot of people that i've heard from are like we want more room but yes. we don't have that option and of course then the builders are like well but then you're it's not affordable and i'm like oh my god <laughs> there you go <laughs> it's the circle it's yeah. the circle again so i'm just yeah, like yeah, come yeah. on just you know have a variety you know, have some bigger lots, have some smaller yes. lots, patio homes. I mean, there's there's a market for patio homes. There is. You know, there is huge. a huge market for that, especially for your older population that want to downsize. They don't have anywhere nice to downsize. They want a smaller Charlie, patio home. Charlie, even nice. first-time home buyers. I mean, let, let's get yeah, real. Yeah. First-time home buyers, you have, uh, you have a regular, you know, husband and wife, both working. They don't you need really a five-bedroom house. Much time. Yeah, you don't have much time to spend on, on, on the yard. You know, like right. you got a newborn baby. You know, to the little mm -hmm. kids. I I I had my son for the first three years on a on a condo with like small courtyard, and I love it. You know, two right. bedroom, one bathroom. That was that was great. You know, I mm -hmm. always knew where he was. I didn't need a big house. You know, I always was there if I was needed. Right. So yeah, first so, time home buyers go for patio they're, homes. They're you don't need five acres as your first home. Right. No, that's something you build up to. Yeah. Yep. You know, and that's that's there's there's a market for all of it in the area. I just I wish that there was, I wish there were there were more options. opportunities. Yes. Op yes. Opportunities. Thank you and options for that. So let's see. We did the moratorium, which was crazy. Um, we did Lake Murray overlay. Um, we've done zoning amendments to include tiny homes. Mm -hmm. 
um, which that's a new new topic. What amendment was done? Um, that one is currently be oh I, sh I skipped around. That's currently being worked on. So okay, so let it's me, not it's not, not uh, finished yet. Not finished yet. Let, not finished yet. Let me let me jump back. So my first year we did row reclassifications, moratorium, like Murray overlay, stricter tree protections, um, because people want trees. They don't like the clear cutting and mm -hmm. knocking everything down and leveling it and then planting little scrub trees. And so you might not like uh, me after I say this, but please take down all the pines. <laughs> oh, no, the pines, the pines are not in a um, protect, protected tree category. Thank you. Long needle pines, yes, but mm -hmm. not your yeah. scrub. scrub oh, and. Yeah, I, I hate them. And I, hate is a strong word. I don't want to use hate, but you just um, like them. They contribute to a lot of the pollen around. Them. Yeah, they do contribute to them, and they're soft. It's a softer wood. Yeah, mm. and it's pines are meant to be an agricultural crop, actually, okay. for pulpwood and lumber. Yep. Yep. That's, that's what correct. that's what pines should not be. Not in your backyard, for. right? Not in your backyard. No, mm. they are lightning bolt magnets, and then they die and they fall on your house. Well, yeah. One just fell off uh, this weekend, and and then broke my lights, which I just put it back on because another pine fell anyway. Uh, um, let's, <laughs> Sounds okay, like that's so let's, a personal problem at your house. <laughs> I wish pine was a guy so I can bring it to the ring and then <laughs> get our difference right. But Yeah, so um, then we went through and did, um, I told you about the larger setbacks, um, a, a new county noise ordinance. Um, and that actually got brought into... And everybody wanted us to ban fireworks for the longest. Not everybody. A handful of people wanted us to ban fireworks because of the noise ordinance. Completely. Like, like, we can't ban fireworks. So that ended up just going into a noise ordinance, you mm -hmm. know. And then we, d we did go through and look at that again. Um, but it's going to stay in the noise ordinance. We're not okay. banning fireworks. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's just... <laughs> That's just that's, it. That's yeah. ridiculous. So, yeah. anyways, um, and then in 2022, we adopted the comprehensive plan, which had been a two-year process. Comprehensive plan it creates a guide for future growth, mm -hmm. um, which we talked about briefly yep, at the meeting did. a few weeks ago. Um, so that is a plan. It's good for 10 years. Every county, every municipality should do one for you know every 10 years or so, just to guide future growth. It's a check-in. It's a it's a guide. It's not a law. It is a guide to plan for future growth. Um, so we got that done. And everybody should take a look at that plan. Absolutely. You know, every single body. I mean, it should be fun that uh, at one point if somebody makes a complaint on social media, because you know there are a million of those. What? You know, you say, I've never seen complaints on social media. <laughs> Just copy and paste the plan. Read the plan, you know, right. and that's it. And it's easy to find. You just go to the Lexington County mm -hmm. website, and you can type in the search button, comprehensive plan, yeah. and it yeah. will show up. It's called Come Grow With Us, or Grow With Us is what it's called. Yeah, I will, I will read it again in a couple of years and look back and see what uh, has been done. And it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, some of these changes you asked, like did the moratorium work, mm -hmm. the purpose of it was to stop submissions so we could take a look at what we had mm -hmm. and and tweak some of these ordinances and we did get that done yeah um and we haven't seen a lot of new developments submitted under the new ordinances yeah um because there were so many that were in the pipeline prior to that and those are still being worked through the pipeline i think so, that's what a lot of people don't understand because they ask me they'll say well there was a moratorium but look at all these new developments I say, well they well, were they already were in the works prior to exactly it, you don't submit and then start building the next right. so day whitewater landing that was put in gosh back in 2020 um lake tide the one that just popped up on social media that's that's a big deal right now. Mm -hmm. um, that original, it was originally 263 homes, was submitted late 2020 before I was even on council. Mm -hmm. um, and then they did a revision that they submitted before the moratorium for 238 homes. Those That plat still has not been approved yet. So that developer is still working with the county on plat approval. Yeah. It was submitted in 2021 before the moratorium. We're in 2024. Yeah. 
plat approval can take a long time. And it's not the county that may take a long time. It may it, The process goes, hey, I'm a developer. I'm going to submit this plan. They're like, okay, we'll look at it. You have to have a development review meeting first to kind of go over the, the idea. Mm-hmm. They give you, the county gives you suggestions or thoughts. Oh, yeah, this will work. This won't work. They go back, put out the plat basically start drawing in all the boxes where the houses are going to go where the roads are going to go and then that's the plat and then new suggestions come up and then exactly. new suggestions come so up again exactly so it's this ping pong this, back yeah. and forth process it can literally take years oh i've seen it i've seen it firsthand and that's probably one of my biggest criticism from the outside mm-hmm. in the government and it feels like it has become it's a ping pong match. Yeah, that's what too it, yeah. bureaucratic. Is that is that the right way to say? Mm-hmm. Too bureaucratic. Yeah, yeah but so uh, you know. I, I do have one question about that. You mentioned social media and posts about that area. So that developer submitted those plans mm-hmm. pre all of this stuff that y'all have written all of it. So they don't have to abide by the new zoning correct regulations, the new setbacks, anything correct. And that same developer ended up buying, I think. I haven't seen any finalized plans again. It could take a couple of years. Yeah. Um, they um, may have bought the 40 acres from Dominion also on Lake Tide, and that is under the Lake Murray overlay. So if you, if those two plats were approved today, the first 70 some odd acres of that development would be under the old rules, and the 40 acres would be under the new rules. <laughs> so, which but again, from which one? There's no Trump. There's no neither Trump the other. It's just it's when at the time the plat is submitted, uh-huh. or when the d- development review meeting happens, it you fall under those rules at that time. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and and you know developers might drag their feet too. So it's yeah. not necessarily the county. It, it, yeah. It, it, lumber prices. Mm-hmm. You know the cost to get a. Yeah. vinyl window yeah i mean it's just like all of those factors go into play of when a developer wants to start pursuing things further they they haven't even submitted their final plans you know they've got the initial plans that were submitted yeah they're they're on their ago. own they're on their own surfboard of bureaucracy to uh, right. big corporations yeah. and stuff like that they are so yeah it's, it's just it's a process and and and, and you know and it's it's not on you, you know, it's probably on us, you know, because big corporations, they can, they can take, they can take the time. They can mm-hmm. wait, you know, they're in these loans, uh, you know, they're massive. They're looking at the market. They're mm-hmm. looking at the market and they're, they're, they have these loans that are hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars backed by banks that are actually rooting for them. You know, like, I suppose mm-hmm. it's a small guy that has a monthly payment on the loan that he just got and he's yeah. still waiting for Lexington. There must be like a, you know, like you're a Disney girl, right? You got a Disney, you have the small, uh, the fast pass. Yeah, we used to. <laughs> there should be a. They fast take away pass. all the good stuff. <laughs> there should be a fast pass for government for a smaller <laughs> business. Depending on the smaller you are, the faster pass you can get. Hmm. How about that? That's huh? a good Put idea. Put that on your list. You know, because you, you cannot treat two businesses the same way. Right. You really can. And we we do have, there are some caveats for that. So let's say that, um, I'll just, I, I like to use me as an example for everything because mm-hmm. I don't like to single out anybody. But let's say that I'm a mom, right? I'm a mom. I've got two kids. I've got some land. And I want to split up my land and give it to my kids and my grandkids, right? Anything that divides more than twice, even if it's me, then I am seen as a developer and yeah. I have to do a subdivision. Yeah. Even though I'm not doing a subdivision, like a home neighborhood mm-hmm. subdivision, I'm doing a subdivision of land if I split it more than two ways. You're right? So yep. if I had my however many acres I have, let's just say for even numbers purposes, let's say I have 50 acres and I want to split it up between eight of my family members, then I'm now looked at as a developer of doing a subdivision and I have to show lines and roads and I'm like, but wait, I just want to give land to my kids. I just want to give land to my kids and my grandkids. What do you mean? They're not going to build on it right now. I'm not, I'm not building houses on it. I'm just like, they might one day. I just want to separate these tracks because that's now what I want to do. Yeah, right? to the developer rules. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, so when I hear situations like that as a county council person, 
I'll go to our community development office and I'm like, hey, what's what's the deal with this? You know, this this family's just they're not looking they're not a developer, they're not gonna split up the land and develop it and make houses. What, and and they're able to waive on a case by case? They so? are. They okay. and that's where that free Ticket pass, mm -hmm. free pass, yeah. fast pass, fast lightning, pass. How's it called? You know the name. Yeah, I know. It's from a... <laughs> so that is an instance yeah. where I can yeah. actually truly help, and you know, talk to community development and say, "Hey, this is what they're trying to do. You know, can you can you at least work with them or show them a better way to do this? Yeah. You know, and there's usually a real estate attorney involved and a surveyor involved because you know that's. Those are the players you have to be yeah. involved to do that kind of a split. And Charlie, with. I think that that's one both one of the most difficult tasks about your position, and one of the I think that where you are superb, you know, like one of your strongest because I always see you involved with the community. I always see you know uh, in person events, uh, social media, like it or not, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're always there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you're reachable, <laughs> you know, you are, you are, uh, like somebody that has a problem like that, you know, they don't just call an 800 numbers and good luck, you know, and, and, and come back and say, man, I tried Lexington County for three months and I have no answer. I mean, have you talked to Charlie? Right, exactly, exactly. And that's, I hear that story a lot. And so like even, even as simple as the garbage, the garbage issue, mm -hmm. which is so much better now than it was two years ago. Thank you. <laughs> like, I mean, I would see posts on social media. Capital Waste hasn't been here in three months. They haven't fed. Da, 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 da. And I was just like, hey, call me. Yeah. Call me. Tell, give me your, like, don't put your address and everything on social media. Call me. So I'll yeah. message people. I'm like, call me. Let me know what's going on. And then we can get it fixed and we can get it addressed. So that was literally like a year and a half process to get Capital Waste fixed. And it, it wasn't so much that, you know, capital waste needed to be fixed, but coming out of COVID, they had a shortage of drivers. They had new management, new drivers didn't know where everybody lived. So they just needed to be made aware of it and people couldn't get in touch with capital waste. And so they got in touch with me. Yeah. I got, I got in touch with capital waste through our waste management guys and things got fixed, you know, and that's, that's, that's what you're here for. As a council person, you're not just here to make policy. You're here to help the constituents get through the process. And that's, I mean, council does make policy. That yeah. is what we are charged with. But we also represent the constituents. Mm -hmm. We represent what they want to get done. We represent the issues that they have. And we, we move forward with that, get them in the, the, right, the right areas that they need to be. I think the most difficult part of that is saying, you know, no. I get. Mm -hmm. I'm, I believe that you might have many times when you're like somebody really believes that they're right, and uh, you know they're entitled to something or they're entitled to certain response, and you have to be like, uh, it doesn't work that way. There's nothing I can do. I'm sorry. I think and and because you're the filter, you're the first yeah. line of defense in the government with the people. It that is that is probably the most challenging part. Is it's not it's not just saying no, it's explaining. It's explaining what is possible and what can be done without using the word no, if that makes sense. So your your child comes to you. Hey, I tell Dad. him no. <laughs> you, you tell him no, right? It's because he's your child, <laughs> yeah. right? But so like, but you give a, him other options. An adult comes to you and they are asking you these questions and they want to know why. It's a big difference. I don't need his boat. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, exactly. You know, and you get, the three year old's like, why, 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 why? And you're just like, oh my god, because I said so. So that I can't use that. I can't. Yeah. I can't say because I say so. You know, because it's not me. It's Correct. it's not. It's not me saying yes or no. It is understanding county policy. It is understanding how this one action that a small group of people may or may not realize what they want impacts 310,000 citizens mm -hmm. in the entire county. And as a county council person, when we're setting policy and we're reviewing things, we have a mission and a vision for the county. And one is to provide a quality of life at a reasonable cost. So there are certain things that certain people want that if we did that, we'd have to raise taxes tenfold for everybody in the entire county. Right. And that's not fair to the 300,000 citizens that can't afford that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's just, so you, you have to look, you've got, you've got the small cone in your district that you 
you look at, right? What are things in my district that I can do to help the folks in my district? But it's not just my district. It's the entire, the county, entire county, right? Right. And there's nine districts, which means there's nine council people, right? And you have to work together and it takes five votes to get anything done. Whether it's it's to not do something or to do something, because it's a majority vote. So Charlie maybe may want to do something all day long. Maybe that's one thing that needs to be, to be corrected too. Like you know, like for example, uh, why people from Gaston have to have any say in on what are we doing over here? Right. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. And so that um, the newest one of the newest ordinances that we're working on right now mm -hmm. is the Eastern Overlay District. Have you heard? Of, I haven't no, heard that. No, but that sounds good. So, so we're gonna be east side. <laughs> no, we're west side. <laughs> so, <laughs> God, I, my, my head just went to the musical west side story. Oh, yeah. I can't even help it. <laughs> so, Charlie, we're running out of time. Yes. And, uh, but just, uh, just to close. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm good. Go ahead. Are you sure? I'm just still thinking about east side. This west is not side. the it's very okay. first time that I have you in front, I and mean, I like. Uh, Okay, anyway, um, the biggest, one of the biggest, uh, I wouldn't say concern, but loudest uh, complaints is um, safety. Uh, police patrolling the roads uh, and medical services being too slow to, to come back. And, you know, people call 911 and nothing happens. Nothing happens. That's never happened to me. That's never happened to anybody that I know, knock on wood. But that seems to be like the echo chamber so there is there is a little bit of chatter out mm -hmm. there right now um some of the things that we have done in the past two years to help ems services and fire services all of our fire men now are required to be emts so you hear a lot of times fire trucks will arrive on the scene mm -hmm. so depending on the acuity level of the call which would be the emergent level mm -hmm. high emergency i'm bleeding i'm dying mm -hmm. right to i broke my ankle two totally different types of emergencies. Like an, a broken ankle is not life-threatening, but if I just chopped my arm off with a chainsaw, that's life-threatening, yeah. I need help now, right? So that is a high acuity call. You call in 911, I just chopped my arm off, I'm bleeding to death, they're sending the cavalry. And right now, when they send the cavalry, our times have gotten so much better. It's eight to nine minutes in the Chapin area um, for something that's not the entire cavalry, cavalry, but it's still a high emergency call, it's under 12 minutes. The average now is under 12 minutes to response. Um, several things that have impacted that is we have a private ambulance company that we've contracted for. We had phase one for six months, phase two for six months, phase two went into effect last July. So we finally got six months of numbers for phase two. That's transport calls and low acuity calls. So that's the, I just broke my ankle. I'm going to crawl through my yard to get to my phone to call mm -hmm. 911. I'm not dying, but please send me somebody to come and get me. That call is a low acuity call. It's going to take longer. It may take 30 or 40 minutes because now you're sending the private ambulance company. You're not sending the Calvary. Okay. We're mm -hmm. saving the Calvary for life than for death. a true life threatening emergency. So you hear stories of it took 45 minutes. It's not a life threatening emergency. Hmm. Um, and it hadn't happened in the past year, you know, or even six months. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. Knock on wood. Right. So, so that's a good shedding light into the issue. Because like I said, I, I haven't seen numbers like you're saying, right. the average time. I mean, that is average time for because people are going to be like, there's no way you're going to take eight minutes from Chapin to Timberlake, you know. But this is average time. Right. You know? It's an average time. And I will tell you, the ambulance, if it is if it is downtown Chapin, mm -hmm. and they're sending the Calvary down Amex Ferry Road or down to the end of St. Thomas Church mm -hmm. Road from Crossroads, okay. right? Yeah. Crossroads yeah. Fire Station. That fire truck is going to be the first one to go. They're going to get on scene. They're going to evaluate it. We have an ambulance that's always in Chapin proper, and now we have one that's out at Amex Ferry as much as possible. It's not there 24-7, but it's there as much as possible. But we also have what we call a quick response vehicle, QRV. Mm -hmm. Okay. That has a paramedic in it, and it's a Tahoe. Mm. And he can 
navigate through traffic and he can fly and he can do, he can get on a scene faster than an ambulance truck, mm-hmm. right? Because he's a smaller, he can right. maneuver a little bit better. So we have a QRV and that stays in Chapin a good bit too. So we have resources in Chapin and that private ambulance company freed up our paramedics and freed up our EMTs so that we can be on standby for those higher acuity calls. So, I mean, it's, it's worked out so much better and I just, I don't know. You're, you're sitting here. You hear, you hear all sirens the all the time. time. There was one right whenever I was coming here that was going that way, you know, with the fire truck and the ambulance. It's it, multiple times a day. They're here. They are working. They I do everything. I used to everything. live in New York City. That was all the time. That was everything. <laughs> New York City, yes. It's a little bit different. This is totally, like... totally different. Um, so, yes, we have been working. And as far as law enforcement goes, um, there are a lot of openings in law enforcement. People don't want to be cops anymore. You know, when you're a kid, what do you want to be? I want to be a police officer. Nobody wants to be a police yeah, officer anymore. Yeah, they want to be a TikToker. We've, we've changed. The, the culture has changed. Yeah. Society has changed. Same thing with paramedics. You know, yeah. there, uh, there are more people, uh, as I've heard recently, there's more people starting to get into that field because we have also been promoting it as a stepping stone. And you also, you still have that program where it's a free, yes. not free, uh, well, Free, yes, right? it's free. I mean, you still have to, once you complete your degree, you still have to be so, in the force for a couple of, a couple of years. Is that correct? That's how it works? Um, it, mm, I'll explain how it works. So, Carlos, you want to change careers altogether, right? You're just like, I'm done with real estate. I'm out. I'm going to go be a paramedic. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. You have no medical training. You have no background in that at all. But now you want to go be a paramedic. So what Lexi County does is they will put you into this recruit academy they pay for you to go to school and they pay you a salary while you are in school so that you can focus on learning everything you need to learn. So you don't have to go and work a swing shift somewhere. You don't have to go out and work a job while you're going to school because now we're paying you to go to school school. and we're paying for your school and we're providing all materials. So you get a year to go to school and get paid to go to school. How many active students uh, does the county have right now in that, um, pro- that program? I think we I think we have 20-ish going through that program right now. Nice. And this, and so let's say that you were an EMT and you're like, well, I'm an EMT, now I want to become a paramedic. Then we also pay for that EMT. We take that EMT out of rotation, working, and we pay them a salary while they're going and finishing up their paramedic degree. Who it's else a does great that? program. It's that's a, a, that's it's a very, wonderful very program. Interesting, very so we've been program. pushing this and pushing this and pushing this, and our recruit academy is, is starting to fill up more and more, which is really good. Um, I think uh, several months ago, we only had 19 vacancies total. Mm-hmm. Um, and then our budget process, it's, we're in the middle of our budget process. The budget process takes forever. Um, there was a requested budget, which is different than the recommended budget, okay. which is different than the approved budget, right? Because you got to request something. Sounds about my house, right? <laughs> exactly. So you got to request something, then we talk through the recommended, and then we actually come up with yeah. the, the actual budget, right? So our um, chief has put in the recommend the re- requested budget for an additional twenty positions later in twenty twenty four. Sorry, I'm like. Oh no! no, 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 no. <laughs> I, can't, I can't talk with that. That's a problem with a tiny studio. <laughs> so, um, so what he's hoping is that by mid year, we will have all of the current vacancies filled. We don't because we're there. not gonna give him any money for new positions until the current positions are filled. Yeah. And then once those positions are filled, then we have X amount in the budget that's reserved that we will open back up to bring in even more. So that is awesome, Charlie. I think that we touch every single subject that we wanted to touch there. I mean, I can still talk to you for another <laughs> we can hour. We talk but for hours. Yeah. Well, I do want to tell you two things that I want to work on in my upcoming term. And All right, let's let's. You got two, two minutes. Two minutes. So continuing on the trajectory that we're doing right now, but we have an animal problem in Lexington County. We have a lot. Our shelters are full. Mm-hmm. and there are homeless animals all over the place, and they are being unnecessarily euthanized. So there are some things that we need to work on with the animal community big time. Um, we've got a mandatory microchip program right now. Um, there's some chatter about a mandatory spayed neuter program, unless you're registered to breed kind of a thing, mm-hmm. um, because dogs get out, 
dogs have accidents <laughs> just like people <laughs> maybe, maybe more so i don't know um so you know we're, we're looking at some of those things on how we can help our yeah. shelters and how we can help with the amount of animals that are out there and then lexington county has two divisions for development it is residential or commercial right there are a lot of agricultural farms in lexington county and so when a farm wants to add a corn maze or mm-hmm. add a public gathering place or a wedding venue or wants to do a haunted house mm-hmm. on their property. They turn commercial. They, it has to turn commercial, right? Small farms can't afford to do that. So then small farms are like, well, I'm only making X amount of dollars on my strawberry crop. What can I do to increase my my revenue, my money, da 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 right. This strawberry is really hard to do this once a year. I only have cash flow coming in once a year. How can I do this, right? So then they're like, oh, you can go commercial. So the state of South Carolina has an agritourism caveat. So I want to see what Lexington County can do to have a third category for agritourism so that that small farm doesn't have to go commercial Full commercial, yeah. Because yeah. they can't afford yeah. full commercial, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's I want I want to work on that. That's I great. think that's great because I that's think great. as much that. as we can keep our farms intact. Well, without where they're not farms, having to... you don't have food, yep. and you don't even have beer without farms. <laughs> Come yeah. on, <laughs> yeah. No, they're, they're, they're the life. They're the blood of, uh, of yeah. right. the right world. Right. So if we can provide our farmers another way to make some additional money in their off seasons yes. without forcing them to go commercial, and it's without, a win. It's a win and, for and, everybody, and, and, and without forcing them to raise the price of the products. You know, yeah, exactly. At the end, it's a whole anyway. Yeah. So, Charlie, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you. I think that uh, we're just gonna close it out right now. You know, we don't we don't have anything else to add. I mean, we do. There's <laughs> but so much more. We don't have enough time. <laughs> good, good chat as always, and thank, thank you, you for, for all you're doing for the county. Thank you. Thanks for having me back again. Yeah, and good luck on when are the primaries? June 11th. June 11th. Yes, and early voting opens May 28th. Early voting. Early voting. Right. June eleventh. Let's June eleventh. Right. June eleventh. Come out June eleventh. Go with that. All right. Thank you everybody for listening. <laughs> thank and you. Catch you up next week. All right. Thank Bye. you. <laughs>